What I'll touch upon now is confidentiality. Its importance, just to re reiterate its importance, and then a little bit more or just the brief principles in terms of when it can be breached in addition to when it must be breached. Okay, so confidentiality, its importance, patient autonomy that I talked about before, respect for person. It's a fiduciary relationship. So what do we mean by a fiduciary? Fiduciary means that one party is in a position of power in relation to the other. So the healthcare practitioner, doctor, is in a position of power in relation to the patient. And the law would expect that in that position of power, we do not so-called misuse or abuse it. And part of that is that implied promise that we will respect confidentiality of whatever information that is given to us. It is part of being a virtuous doctor. And then, of course, the consequences of breach is that the loss of the doctor-patient relationship, trust, the trust in it, which will make the doctoring, which will make the healthcare practitioner job so much more difficult, if not impossible, if the patient does not feel free to share information with us. Let me say preserving medical confidentiality is both a major public and professional interest. A professional confidence should only be breached in the absence of patient consent in exceptional circumstances and if public or patient interest dictates it. Okay, so what are the principles? So what is useful to, to think about uh, if we are ever faced with a situation that say, can I or must I breach confidentiality in this particular competent adult who is my patient? What we want to run through our minds. Well, of course, number one, with the person's consent. That's the number one. If the person says, yeah, sure, I agree. You can inform my HR uh, about everything in relation to what is wrong with me, what I'm suffering from. Um, then, of course, you may. You may breach confidentiality because the patient has given that consent. But just be clear that you breach it to the extent of the consent given. Okay? Then, of course, in the best interest of the patient. A lot of times, a patient is, uh, in fact, in, for example, the hospital setting, the patient is under shared care. There are different doctors in the team, different nurses, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, a whole host of people will be involved in the care of the patient. So there is that, that implica implication, that implied thing that, yes, because... It's for the patient's interest. Whoever is in that team looking after the patient must know about their patient and information is shared in that context. Of course, in an emergency, if time is of the essence, then of course, in information consent is dispensed with in terms of treatment required and information is shared with whoever is necessary to bring that patient out of that emergency. Then in terms of law, we already talked about the laws that mandate. And then there are laws which permit. So for example, Mental Capacity Act, Children and Young Persons Act do have provisions which permit the disclosure of information in relation to somebody uh, that appears to be abused or is being abused. But that's slightly out of context of today's discussion. Okay? Then the greater public interest. Uh, greater public interest, of course, the principles uh, under which we may breach confidentiality in the context of greater public interest are laid down in the case of W and Agdil. Our SMC ethical guidelines, what does it say? You must have sound justifications if you dis decide to disclose patients' information without consent. Disclosure without consent is generally defensible when it is mandated by law. So I already talked about that. And then uh, there's all these provisions which I already talked about earlier on. What we do now is to reflect on the implications and maybe a response to 
what is a very difficult situation? What is a very difficult situation for the healthcare practitioner uh, and the patient when mandatory reporting, when the circumstances require reporting of confidential information? Bearing in mind, victims of arrestable offences, infectious diseases, can be particularly vulnerable if they do not receive treatment in a timely manner. So if a person is aware, especially if they're aware that, that what they're going to the doctor with or for might or will need to be reported, they might hold back. And is this really a public interest? But of course, the greater public interest is still that Arrestable offences are dealt with properly, appropriately, correctly. Infectious diseases also are dealt with correctly, appropriately and efficiently. Otherwise, uh, it can spread to a much bigger population for the infectious diseases. But it does, it does present that challenge to the mutual respect between the healthcare professional and patient, which is essential for the trust that this relationship requires and mandatory reporting requirements could jeopardize this trust. But as we said, greater public interest dictates that mandatory reporting is sometimes necessary. It is, it is actually often very difficult for both the healthcare practitioner so very often when, when uh, healthcare practitioners are made aware of provisions, especially in relation to Section 424 Criminal Procedure Code, you look at it, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like, I have to? It, it really makes it so difficult. It's like, do I tell that patient in front of me? What do I say? The only thing I can say is that we must be sensitive in how we deal with it. And of course, ideally, whoever re receives that report should deal with it in a sensitive manner and that would at least help to ameliorate, ameliorate some of the concerns, not all but some. I'll just touch on this uh, it's beyond the context of the discussion today but I think it's very important for all of us to reflect some of the specific issues in relation to breach of confidentiality. Sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it. So loose talk, talk in the hospital cafeteria, the lift, gossip in public, we must bear in mind other people can hear it, sometimes do hear it, and it is a breach of confidentiality. Uh, social media posts, uh, then of course accessibility to medical records. Uh, if we're not part of the team looking after the patient, if uh, we're not students who have been given that, that permission or right to access the records, we must never, never access records which are not, where we are not part of that treating team or we're not given that permission to do. What is written on medical certificates, we also should not be writing, for example, even the diagnosis unless the patient states that they want that. Communication challenges, of course, poses a real practical issue. So when, uh, for example, a family member is the person doing a translation, then it's inadvertent that confidentiality, if you like, is breached uh, to that family member. And uh, we just have to be very cognizant that in this context, at the very least, the person, the patient, our patient has agreed that yes, my family member should know everything about me that we're talking about and will do the translation. Okay? This is maybe the elephant in the room. We talk about the issues relating to mandatory reporting. But, uh, for example, as part of Healthier SG, all patients who are enrolled into a Healthier SG the electronic medical records will be directly linked into the national electronic health records. So in a way, it is a form of mandatory reporting of all a patient's information. Uh, 
Um, exactly how it will pan out, it, will, it is left to be seen. At this point, when we are doing this discussion, it's just being rolled out. Okay, so in conclusion, mandatory reporting infringes on respect for patient confidentiality and privacy, which is a cornerstone of the doctor-patient relationship. However, greater public interest justifies that this otherwise sacrosanct principle can and sometimes must be breached. We must be cognizant of the situations when confidentiality and privacy may inadvertently be breached or so and consciously make sure we are not guilty of this. Thank you very much.